folks, and welcome to our second annual FPS time. Now last year, I reviewed the game Wolfenstein 3D for y'all, so since I really like the franchise, hell, it's in my top 50 favorite video game franchises list, I decided to review Wolf 3D's successor slash prequel game, Spear of Destiny. Now usually I would go over the history of this game and how it was made and such, but truth be told, I can't exactly do that. You see, Spear of Destiny was pretty much made alongside Wolf 3D. In fact, they were both released the same year, with only four months between each other. During the development of the previous game, a ton of maps were made, but only about 60 could be chosen for the final product. So instead of just throwing them out and leaving them on the cutting room floor, so to speak, id Software decided to take these extra maps and just build an entirely new game around them. That's pretty damn cool in my opinion, even though id was busy working on the next big thing. <coughs> Doom. <coughs> They still found time to continue on the Wolfenstein series. So, enough beating around the bush, let's finally take a look at Spear of Destiny. The one thing that I have to bring up immediately as I start this game is both its strongest and weakest point. All the assets that were used in Wolf 3D are used here in Spear of Destiny. Now, that's kind of a double-edged sword, but as I said in my review for Wolf 3D, that game did a lot of things right. All the guns are here, all the enemies make a return, and it's more or less much of the same from the previous game. And to me, that's not a bad thing, but then again, I'm a fan of those old school FPS trappings. And I can't really speak for everyone else. If you don't include the mission packs, which I'll be covering as well, then Spear of Destiny is a pretty short game, only about 20 levels long, and that's including the two secret floors. In that respect, the game kind of feels like an expansion pack. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Spear of Destiny was originally intended to be. But even though all the assets from Wolf 3D were used again, the devs still added some features that are worth noting. For example, the plot of Spear of Destiny is really good. Here's a rundown of the game's narrative. Roughly two years before the events of Wolf 3D, Hitler, in his quest to master occult magic, has the legendary Spear of Destiny stolen from the Palace of Versailles. After acquiring the spear, Hitler sends it to Castle Nuremberg to be safeguarded by his most deadliest underlings until it is needed. After gathering intel on Hitler's theft of the spear and his willingness to use its dark powers, the Allies send B.J. Blaskovich behind enemy lines to retrieve the spear and bring it back into Allied hands. After entering the tunnels underneath the castle, BJ immediately encounters heavy resistance by Nazi forces. After bloodily fighting his way through hordes of Third Reich opponents, BJ finally makes it to the ramparts of the castle. There, he fights the near-invulnerable Death Knight. But through determination and wits, BJ defeats Death Knight and tries to claim the spear. However, upon touching the mythical relic, BJ is sucked into hell, where he must now face the true guardian of the spear, the Angel of Death. Kinda makes me wonder if this whole hell level was alluding to the players what id had planned for their next FPS. Anyway, BJ duels with the Angel of Death, and he's incredibly easy by the way, and is deemed worthy to wield the spear. After being returned to the mortal realm with the Spear of Destiny in hand, BJ collapses from exhaustion. BJ is fortunately found by allied forces and brought to a hospital, living on to fight another day. Pretty damn good plot. The devs were obviously inspired by the book The Occult Roots of Nazism, which, by the way, is a great read. Y'all should go track down a copy. Anyway, this is the first time in the Wolfenstein series that a paranormal element was used for the story. This would go on to inspire the stories in the follow-up games Return to Castle Wolfenstein and uh, Wolfenstein 2009. This in my opinion, gave the Wolfenstein series even more character narrative-wise. And think about it like this. A lot of World War II FPS games plots 
were and still are very run-of-the-mill kind of plots. With those games, it's more about winning a particular battle rather than fighting tooth and nail to take down something evil. This is something that stayed consistent with the franchise all the way up to the New Order. Now, don't get me wrong on that statement. The New Order was a fantastic game with a hella awesome story, but we got two other Wolfenstein games to cover before we get to that title. So besides a better plot, there are a few features that make Spear of Destiny stand out amongst other games in the franchise. A good example is the difficulty of this game. Compared to its predecessor, Spear of Destiny is a lot more challenging. Take the enemies, for instance. In Wolf 3D, once you fired your gun into a room, the enemies would all sound off and try to zero in on your location. They do that here too, but if you're playing on a higher difficulty, like me, then some of the enemies will actually stay where they've been placed and only attack once they see you. This means that you have to be extra careful when exploring the levels because you never know what might be lurking around the corner. So I emphasize. Save your progress a lot, and save often. Y'all can thank me later. Another thing that makes Spear of Destiny a little more challenging than Wolf 3D is the level layouts themselves. In the last game, the levels were a bit streamlined. Sure, there were some levels that really pushed your maze skills to the test, but here in Spear of Destiny, the levels seem specifically designed to be more challenging. And I'm not just talking about pushable walls for secrets. I mean that there are walls in some levels that actually block your path to the exit, so you gotta look around for secrets. Thus I made this thing right here. This is a printed out PDF copy of the Spear of Destiny hint book. Now, what is the Spear of Destiny hint book, you might ask? Well, it was essentially a strategy guide. You see, back in the day before strategy guides were really a thing and before the internet was widely available, uh, you would find special offers for stuff like this on a card or something in a game's box. You could order it via phone and bank card, or you could send a check or money order to a specific address and you would get it in the mail. Now I'm going to leave you folks a link to a PDF in the description below because if you all are thinking of buying a genuine copy of Spirit Destiny's hymn book, good luck! Because they're rare and they go for a lot of money on both eBay and Amazon. <laughs> While we're on the subject of game challenge, the bosses in this game are much harder to face than they were in Wolf 3D. In the last game, bosses wouldn't follow you into secret rooms in their levels. In Spear of Destiny, they're way more relentless. Hell, they even seem to kill you faster. Unlike in Wolf 3D, you have to plan out a bit here. That's one of the reasons I mentioned the hint book. I also think that bosses are a tad more creative than they were in the previous game. They just seem to have had more time put into them. I especially like Uber Mutant and Death Knight. These guys are insane to fight. Firstly, Uber Mutant. He's a tougher, four-armed, knife-wielding version of the regular mutants that you'll find throughout the game, and the regular mutants were already pretty tough. Also, unlike the regular mutants that had a pistol protruding through their chests, Uber Mutant has a motherfucking chain gun sticking out of his. Such a cool boss. Though not as cool as the boss you face after him, Death Knight. As a hint book suggests, you might be playing this game on Death Incarnate, but this guy is Death Incarnate. The devs obviously knew that this game was a little more difficult than Wolf 3D, so they created one of the hardest bosses ever seen in the franchise. I like the design that they used for him. He genuinely looks scary and hard to face. So yeah, the bosses in this game are more creative and a bit more challenging this time around. So that's a plus. You know, playing this game, I've noticed that they made a couple new songs.
In saying that, though, it should be known that a lot of the songs in Spear of Destiny were already featured in Wolf 3D. However, it is pretty cool that they had Bobby Prince do a few extra tunes for this title's release. This one that I'm about to show you is my favorite. Hell, it's my all-time favorite from the entire franchise. I know I say this a lot for some games, but it really does show that the devs cared about this project. Sure, not all the songs are original, but a lot are. And think about it this way, id could have done what Nintendo did with Mario The Lost Levels and lifted every song from Wolf 3D and put them directly into this game, but instead we have a few new tracks to enjoy and I commend that. There are two things that set Spear of Destiny apart from the rest of the games in the series, and those two things are the mission packs. These mission packs seem like expansions, and they kinda are, but at the same time they're kinda not. I would say that there are more along the lines of mods made in-house by id themselves. The mission packs offer updated graphics, new sound effects, 40 new levels, and also new dialogue from the enemies. These mission packs are pretty damn fun to play through if Spear of Destiny wasn't enough for you. Also, these levels are just a tad harder to play through. So if you're looking for even more of a challenge, play the mission packs. Though, in saying all this good stuff about the mission packs, I should state that they don't offer much other than a visual overhaul and new dialogue and sound effects. There's no new story or new music or anything like that. In fact, if you play through and beat one of these mission packs, you get the same ending as you would in Spear of Destiny. Also worth noting, there are no new weapons in these mission packs either. Just the same old knife, pistol, assault rifle, and chain gun. I can kind of understand why the devs didn't make a new story, but would one or two new weapons been too much? Anyway, the mission packs are decent, but don't expect a great deal of content. Well, folks... That's pretty much everything I could cover for Spear of Destiny, but before I give it its final grade, I'd like to give you guys my final thoughts. Well, this was a pretty short one, but in all honesty, folks, what else could I say about Spear of Destiny that I haven't said about Wolf 3D? I ran into the same problem last year when I reviewed Super Mario The Lost Levels. From my point of view, when successor games are just too similar to their predecessors, there's really not much to elaborate on other than a few new features. Now, to be fair, that doesn't mean that Spear of Destiny isn't worth playing. Quite the contrary. If you liked Wolf 3D, then I can guarantee that you'll like this. It's a solid title. It may not have left the same kind of impact in FPS history that the first game did, but then again, it wasn't developed to do so. What Spear of Destiny lacks in franchise progression, it makes up for with great gameplay and an awesome story. Along with Wolf 3D, I highly recommend this game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that you should totally play Spear of Destiny after playing Wolf 3D. It's definitely a worthy successor to a legendary game. And with that, I give Spear of Destiny an E for excellent. It's completely worth a playthrough. Hey Shasta, you want to give your final opinion on Spear of Destiny? After the release of Spear of Destiny, the boys at id Software immediately got to work on a new project, something that would yet again leave a mark on FPS history. I think you folks know where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. 